Okie dokie. So we have got the middle of our bag and we've got our top and our base. So now what we do is we put our seam to seam here and we put a pin in the halfway mark of our middle of our bag. We put a pin in the halfway mark of the back of the bag like so and we put a pin in the halfway mark of the front of our lid and you realize now that you see this getting done how easy it is and you could add lots more pockets to it you could do all sorts of things you could have when this lifted up when this lifts up you could have a little velcro pocket on there so much you could do anyway i've decided i'm going to put the binding on the outside of this one so i'm going to put wrong size together. With this one, I put right size together and did the binding on the inside. So I'm going to put pin to pin. Then I'm going to bring this, remember, a quarter of an inch away from my seam line. There. And put a clip. And then you just clip it and stitch it a quarter of an inch away from your raw edges. So the only thing you have to remember is do a quarter of an inch overlap there. So one of my friends said to me, why don't you just round the edges of this and round it? You could absolutely do that as well. So if you decide you'd rather have it rounded, you can, but this is a really good way of showing you how you do a circle into a square back. So that's why I'd like to show you this way because it's great. So just clip and clip. And now I'm going to leave my quarter inch foot on. I'm leaving the back because I'm just going to sew from this seam a quarter of an inch away from my raw edge around and stop a quarter of an inch away. And this is the beauty of this product. I can just fire it under here and it's not going to move. Such a good product. So needle down a quarter of an inch away from my raw edge, and I'm sewing a, approximately a quarter inch seam. Again, don't be too fussy, you're going to be sewing around it again. So even on a quarter inch foot, I can move my needle position one click, and it's going to go closer to my foot, to the right hand side of my foot. So that's not a bad idea to do on your first run, because you're going to be sewing it again with a quarter of an inch seam. So I just put my needle position one click to the right and it will not break my needle. Okay, so I just get my hand under here to keep my edges all even. And just whip around it. It's very, very, very quick and it's very, very easy. Take your pins out as you go so you don't hit a pin because otherwise you'll be bringing it in to be fixed. And you can damage your machine by running over pins. So please try not to do it. I know people say, oh, I've done it forever, but it's really not good. We've seen the inside of the damage that a pin can do or a needle can do to a machine. So it's not a great idea. Now, remember when you get here, you're stopping a quarter of an inch away from the end. Now you get your lovely sharp scissors, either your duck bills or a really, really nice pointed sharp scissor. And you're going to clip the top of your bag, the quarter of an inch you've left overlap, you're going to clip it to your seam. Just like that. And this one here. So there's my quarter of an inch flapping around and I'm clipping it only to my stitching. Now what happens is you just roll your pin to pin and it fits. So you just push that down and it fits and you've got no drama because you've done that little step that was so simple and made all the difference to your work. And that's how you put a straight edge on something that's round. Okay, so now you just flatten that down and you're going to do a quarter of an inch away, well, it's a less than a quarter of an inch away from your raw edges. And just whip along there, don't be too fussy because you're going to put your binding on and the binding is going to go on the outside. 
And you know, I'm only working with an 80 needle because the um, soft and stable is very, very soft to work with. And it's very pliable. I absolutely love it. Okay, and just bring it down. Oop, bring your little clippy down. There it is. And reverse that and then lock it off. Okay, you do the same to the bottom of your bag, right? So now I'm going to show you how I put my binding on. And I'm using this outrageous binding because I just think it's cool. So these can be cut actually two and a quarter. Have I cut these two and a half? I know, two and a quarter. So this can be cut two and a quarter inches wide. And I'm going to start it from the center back. And I'm actually not going to be really fussy about joining this on an angle. I'm going to join it on the straight. So I'm going to put wrong side to wrong side. I'm going to stitch it this way because I'm going to hand stitch it afterwards. I'm going to use my quarter inch foot. And I'm going to start pretty much just from there. I'm going to just clip it here. and here and I'll show you how to do the corner okay so oops I'm just going to flatten this down I'm going to start right up here because then I can join it nice and easy this time I'm going to clear my needle position so that I'm getting a quarter inch seam that is going to allow me to roll my lining under and in fact, I could do one click to the left and get it a little bit closer to my uh, left hand side. So I'm just going to sew down here. Needle down is a must. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch it around this little curvy bit. You don't have to do any, it's nothing's hard. So just stitch it. And as you're coming to here, you're going to work this around. Okay, just work it around pretty much, oops, I took my needle out, pretty much goes round in a curve. And again, like, like uh, Brenda actually said, you can curve it if you like. So I just come up to here, and I stop, and I just lift it, and I turn it, and I turn my work, and I do a stitch, and I clip it, because it just helps it like that just like you did before and then turn it round okay and it just gives you a lovely little edge now when you've clipped it go forwards and go reverse so nothing comes undone now you're just going around your top curve which is super super easy and when you've put your base on and you're doing this remember to open up your zip so if I had the base on and I'd forgotten to open up my zip I would not have been able to get into my bag if I was doing it with right side to right side. For instance, if this was turned in, because this is a little bit funny, you think you'd be right, but you just aren't. So if this was turned in this way, and I was sewing on my binding, and I'd forgotten to leave a tiny little space to turn it through, I wouldn't have been able to get inside my bag. <laughs> so make sure you leave an opening, a little bit bigger than that would be better, so you can actually get into your bag, okay? It's funny. Simple things, simple things. So when you're doing this, you're just keeping your raw edges of your binding together, and because it is just such a gentle curve, you don't need to cut down the bias. And if you want to use bias binding, use bias binding. There is no, there's no rules. It's uh, the pattern that says bias binding. I don't use bias binding. But um, I am going to do it on one of them. And I've made a children's one for the Tonka cars. Um, I think they're called the little cars. And um, so I'm going to put bind bias binding on the kids one. So just do the same thing. Come around, make sure your raw edges are together. It's interesting how different fabrics uh, react differently too. Sometimes you get fabrics and they don't go around curves very well because they might have too much dressing in them or something else, but if they're pre-washed, they'll work. Bizarre. You just don't know. So while I'm doing this, I'm just going to show you 
some of the other ones that I'm doing and explain a couple of things. Can you see the different heights of these? They're definitely different heights, aren't they? And this is the boys one I'm doing. And I'll just zip that up to show you. Quite fun. And this one's going to have the red bias. And I've teamed it up with the racing check fabric. And it's going to have red bias. So you can see slightly different heights. Now that is all to do with the depth of the teeth of the zip. They were cut exactly the same way, but the teeth of the zips are different sizes. So that is why some of them are ending up a little bit different. And on this one, I'm going to team it up with this beautiful colour here, and it's going to team up like that. And on that one, it's going to have the red. So they're quite interesting to see how different they can look. I've done a black, yellow, and white one, or doing a black, yellow, and white one. And I'm also doing a Kiwiana one, which is our famous Kiwiana fabric. Oh, and my llama. This is my llamas. So I'm doing a llama and spot one as well. So I've, I've made quite a few, or making quite a few. And they're all going to be slightly different. I think they're a little bit of fun. So I'll just finish zipping around here. Make sure everything's out of the road. And when I finish this, all you do is you roll this over and you sit there tonight and you hand stitch it. All right, and you just hand stitch all the way around. So I'll just bring this around to show you. And it's actually fun because when you're sitting hand stitching, you know you've finished a project. So it's actually quite a bit of fun. So bring this up to your corner. I'll take this out of the work this time and show you so you can actually see how I cut it because it might be a bit tricky to see at home. Okay, so I'll bring it up to a quarter of an inch from the end. And I'll stop it so you can see. So there it is there and I'm clipping the binding so it turns around the corner. Okay, that's all I do, clip the binding. Same as when I'm making piping. It's exactly the same method as when I'm making piping. Okay, but make sure you reinforce your, your corner. Nothing worse. Reinforce it. Now I'm just going to come along to here. And I'm not going to do the normal join on this one. I'm just going to do a straight join. Okay, so... <clears throat> All I'm going to do is I'm just going to be putting right side to right side. Get that out of the road so you can see. I'm just going to put right side to right side and I'm just going to go away fly. And I'm just going to meet my fabric together so it's nice and tight. And I'm just going to straight stitch it. So I'm doing a little bit cheating today because we are going to run out of time and I'll be in big trouble. So I'm just going to do a straight stitch down there. In fact, I'll cut all this off so you can see it. That's better. Okay. Now when you're going to be joining something like this and you've got a project in the road, just push your project away like that and clip it so it doesn't get in your road for you to join that seam. Okay, so just get it out of the road. Okay, and then just put your edges together. Do not remove your pin. Go. And allow yourself more fabric next time, Robin. There we go. Oh, I dropped my pin, but I've got my mark. We're all good. And then just straight stitch that just so it's nice and strong and it's joined together. I can leave this foot on because I can just guide it down there, okay? So just get your raw edges together, which they are, and get your little bit of fabric that you've thrown over here because you're going on to single fabric, which is not hasn't got enough body. So go on to your little fabric and then go on to here because there's nothing to hold on to it. Okay, very, very important, that little step. And then come all the way down. 
like that and then try and get that out of the road for the last bit. Perfect. And come on to your fabric. And scissors. Love the scissors. Okay. Trim that one off. Trim that one off. And then trim your excess fabric off. Once you've checked it's right. I have faith. There you go like that. Now all you do with your fabric is you lay it down and you stitch it back together and you have now completed the top of your bag and you do your bottom exactly the same. The base of your carry case, do exactly the same. Okay. Make sure you don't get a tuck. So now you can just, I actually clip it, just get my clips and I clip all the way around that edge. I don't trim off anything. You don't need to trim off anything because you're covering, look how it covers. You do not need to do bias tape. That goes around there perfectly. And what I think I like about this is the fact that it sits up really, really nicely, so that's why I think it's nice to make a feature out of the coloured fabrics you've chosen. Okay, it's a little bit outrageous, isn't it, this one? It's but not, not like me. I quite like it. So I just come all the way around and it fits nice and tightly and then just sit and hand stitch it. Maybe sit in the sun and hand stitch it. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. There we go, and just hand stitch that open, closed, should I say. And there you have your bag all done, okay? And the base does exactly the same. So yeah, they're really, really nice. So I think it's quite interesting how they end up a quite a different height. So the one thing I would say, if you've got a teeth of your zip that's wider, you need to cut these back pieces a little bit wider. So this one, for instance, here, the depth of this was wider than the pattern because the teeth were wider and I stitched it wider. So I ended up cutting this one a quarter of an inch wider than the pattern said. So that's just quite interesting. And I've teamed it up with this beautiful little yellow fabric and I was going to bind it in the black but I think now I'm going to bind it in the yellow. So I think that'll be really, really, really cute. So whether, oh, that's upside down. So whether it's for girls or boys, or you're making it for a friend or for yourself, you can really match up the fabric to suit. This is for a friend who likes bags and shoes. So the inside of this fabric is all shoes. All right, so it's quite, quite fun. So. I hope you've enjoyed it. I think it's a really, really good project and I think it's something I would love to see photos of because the girl that designed it would love me to send the photos through of what everyone else has done, not only myself. So please, 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 if you do one, send me an email. Um, send it to robin at mybanina.co.nz and any feedback you've got. I'd love to know what you think about the mirror, if that worked for you to see the machine and see how to change your stitches, that would be really appreciated. So have a good month and I will see you next month.